Hello, I'm Ervin. Um, I'm the founder of VSAC.gg and we're going to present the console API today uh, with a small, small tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to create a controller that manages a qualification or a seeding phase match or a server. Before we start, let me briefly explain what ESAC is. ESAC is a competitive platform that is building a complete esports infrastructure for Trackmania. So we focus on the three uh, key aspects of this ecosystem, uh, which are players, followers, and organizers. For players, we offer events, automated tournaments like the hourly showdowns, and recently we started testing matchmaking. We're also going to release a few matchmaking ladders and other type of events as well. For followers, they can keep up with results and news in the scene. And for organizers, we offer tools and services which help them manage their tournaments, leagues, or other type of events they might be interested in organizing. ESAC console is part of ESAC and it provides tools and services that automate processes in order to optimize and simplify some of the tournament organization processes. And the focus today is the API of ESCC console, which is free to access for everyone. So why would you care? Why would you want to integrate such an API? Well, if you have, for example, a situation where you don't have a group of people that can help you manage things. And if you're on your own, you might want to automate some processes so that you can uh, make your life easier in terms of managing and organizing your event, especially if you're organizing a large scale event and you have multiple servers, multiple participants, you are going to need help either from other people or from a system. And this is what the SEC is trying to achieve, or maybe just other creative ideas where you can come up with, which it's not currently implemented or you cannot use from the current tools or services that exist in, in our community. Another reason is also simplifying your ESAC management process. If you are either way going to use ESAC, for example, this project that we're going to do in this tutorial helps you with the seeding and the qualification phase. So if you have such a controller or a plugin, maybe if you want to integrate such a plugin into, into um, Pipe Planet or Mania Control, for example, at the end, you are going to have a list of all the times that have been driven in the match that you created on ESAC. And from there, you can easily create other matches that uh, need to take place and assign participants from the seeding phase towards the matches. So it helps, it helps you, it uh, makes things easier. And if you already have some programming knowledge, this is even better. So what I am not going to do is I am not going to teach you about programming. I'm not going to teach you about server controllers and XML RPC and stuff like that. You need to know that, or at least you need to extrapolate the information I'm going to present here. It's, it's, it's just an example. It's just a minimalistic project. It's not something you maybe might want to use yourself, but more something you might get inspired from and create your own projects or your own stuff. Of course I will. At the end of the tutorial, I would will add uh, a GitHub repository with this project and you can access it if you want, but don't leave it like this, work it a bit or rework it, create your own stuff from it. 
So let's go get into the requirements. In this video, if you want to keep up exactly with what we are doing, you will need a dedicated server. Since I don't think the in-game rooms or in-game generated rooms will work. You will need some basic programming knowledge to understand what we're we're doing. Uh, I will use PHP in this. And of course a text or a code editor and I will use PHP Storm. And we're going to aim for something like this. So this is roughly what the processes look like. We have the first process, which is going to be a chat command that the server admin can initiate where we start a match. We have to get all the participants so we can um, allow them access to the server. We'll have to update the match status to live. And we're also going to post a game server to the match so that the players know which server they have to join. The other process is uh, when a player finishes a map, we first have to check if the match is live and add some results. Or in this case, if we're doing a seeding phase, we'll have to add his, his time. And the last process is when, when the uh, match ends. Again, we have to check if the match is live and if yes, we will set the status of the match to ended. This is just a rough uh, view on what we're trying to achieve. We're going to have some smaller other stuff we have to include as well, but this is the main idea. So the first step is we have to configure everything on ESAC first. And I will start from scratch and make an account. And first we need to create a page. The page type doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose organizer in this case. And an event. Again, event type doesn't matter. We're going for a solo event in this in this case. I'm just going to choose a date as a matter. And we are going to create a format. Since we're doing a seeding phase or a qualification phase, uh, we're, going to, we're just going to say it's a time attack format and we're going to choose time attack whatever, add another description. All right. Um, then we're going to need a group. Say it's just group. And a match, which is the tutorial match. Yeah, we need the map first. This is the SEC map and you can use it, it doesn't matter. It's uh we're not going in to integrate the map pool in the controller. This is just a requirement to create the match. Okay, then if we refresh, we're going to see the tutorial here. Uh, what we're going to do also is we are going to have to register to the event because we need participants. So we're going to open the registration. We're actually going to 
require a game account as well if you want to follow along because we need the participants nickname for us to identify who is the um, yeah in order to to match the player and the participant on ESAC and we're just going to add a random nickname doesn't matter actually I, ha I have to add my nickname because we are going to join the server and we want to be able to access it okay and then i need to add myself to the group and to the match as well okay so the event configuration and the match configuration is done then we're going to access console in here and in the menu this is the api that we are going to use for the controller briefly about the api is um, we are going to need a token which will generate shortly we're going to need some ids so the event ids group ids maple ids and so on again after we generate the token i'll show you how to uh, get those and the base URL is api.esac.gg slash v1. And here are the routes. We're going to go through those uh, when we start writing the controller. Okay, so we need to generate the token for the page we just created. We're going to have to copy this one so we can access the API. And the IDs I was telling you about can be obtained from here. So this is the page we created. We have to get the event that we want. And here we have an identifiers button. So we have the maple ID, we have the format ID, participant IDs, group IDs, and match IDs. In this case, I think we only need the match ID. And yeah. Yeah, that's all we need. Just the match ID for this example that I'm showing you in this video. Created the new folder in here uh, called tutorial. And we are going to start. First, we're going to need a composer file where we have to add some dependencies. We also have give a name to the project. Um, yeah. Yes, you see console API tutorial. And uh, the dependencies that we need are the Mania Planet dedicated server API. So we can communicate with the dedicated server via XML RPC. This will be version five upwards. And for the API stuff, we're going to use Gazel. And another step is our controller, which is just going to be one file, one class. We're going to keep it simple. I'm going to have to load the dependencies. And we're going to create controller class. OK. 
Okay, let's actually uh, install the dependencies. Okay. And we are going to need the following things. We're going to need an instance of the API. Uh, the client for the remote protocol to the dedicated server. We need a whitelist. In this case, I'm going to allow myself to join the server by default. Uh, we need a flag so we know when the the match is live. By default, it's it's not live, it's false. A token that we're going to copy from uh, from ESAC. A match ID, which will be set with by the command that I've shown you in the presentation. Participants, which are going to get through the API. And in this case, also, we are going to have to map some uh, in-game logins to the nickname of the participants. All right, and the last steps we need here in the top section of the, the class are some constants, uh, which are the status IDs. Upcoming is one, live is two, and ended is three. I'll show you in a second where I took these numbers from. Um, yeah, and we're going to have to generate a con uh, constructor. Just an empty one, doesn't matter. Where we create a new instance of the causal client. Actually, not this one. And we're going to pass the base URI as api.tsac.gg slash v1, the base API, which was in the documentation. And then the next step is the configuration of the remote protocol. Yeah, new. And here uh, there's going to be an IP that we have to pass. So add your own IP and a port. Maybe let's just do some objects with those as well. So IP. And port. Okay, and some other configuration that we need to do. I'll just copy paste these since they're kind of boilerplate code. So these and one more thing, which is the authenticate query. And here by default, I think it's super admin, it's super admin or something like that. If you have something else, you might need to change these. So we want callbacks. Uh, we don't want players to be able to call votes. Uh, this is, 
I think the default API version. I'm not sure if there's any new ones since 2013. So it's, it's the old Mania Planet protocol that's that's used, and we want to enable callbacks because we're going to need some events that only are fired through the to the callbacks. And in case something like this happens, we're just gonna shut down the server, the controller. Next up, we need to loop through the callbacks. So create a function for that. So I'll generate the loop like while through. And we are going to get the callbacks from the remote protocol. In case we have an exception, we're just going to dump it. And override the calls with an empty array. And we're also going to create another function that handles these calls. So this is the other function, takes an array and we have to iterate through all the calls. And each call, uh, we will have an event name, the first element of this first call. And the event data is the second element. Also to keep up and to see if the actual controller is working, we're going to echo the the event name. Okay, and then we are going to switch the event name and we have three cases we have to cover whenever a player is chatting the second case is when um, someone joins the server and we can get that through player info change third one is and match and actually we have four not three And the fourth one is a special one. Remote script callback array. So this is the one we activated in the constructor with, with this line. And this in itself is kind of another, it's a callback within a callback, so to say. And we have to do the same thing again. So we have callback. Uh, type which is the first element of the event data and then the data of the callback which is event data one and we're going to switch again by the type and when we have this event, the waypoint event. We're going to do some things in here. Okay.
Okay, looks good. Uh, let's jump back into the presentation so you can understand what I've done here. So these are the events we specified in, in the beginning of the video. The first one is the command, which we handled in the switch we just created. And the second one is when a player finishes the map. So that's the waypoint event. And the end match is again an event we covered. Also another event that's not in here is when a player joins the server. And the reason we have that is so that we can kick the player if he is not uh, whitelisted or if he doesn't have access to, to the match. Now let's do the first event. Um, let's go through each step we need to make. First one is we're going to have a command like this slash start slash uh, match ID. Then we af after it's triggered, after we make sure this is the command which has been sent, uh, we will have to get the participants from ESAC. We then we need to whitelist those participants. We'll have to update the match status. And we're also going to add this server to the match so the players know which server to join. Okay. To get the match ID, we need to get the text first, which comes from event data and on the second index. Uh, the command will split the text into an array delimited by by the slash and if it's not the case someone just chatted something else and hasn't entered any command uh, we're just going to skip skip this entire section but in the case that um actually in the case that it's not not a start command again we're going to break because we won't include any other commands we're just going to keep this one just the start command okay and in this case, we know for sure that it's a start command, so we can add the match ID. We're going to convert it to an end to make sure it's in, it's compatible with our API. And the match ID will be the second index. Okay, so for the participants, we need to create a function, which will add participants from ESAC to our controller. I will have to handle an exception, so this is going to be an uh, an API request and then after we get the participants we will iterate through them and we are going to add the participant to our whitelist this is something we need to come back to after we 
create the um, the function that gets the participants for the event status the same thing we need an api call which should throw an exception in case something goes wrong and this is going to be simply named update status to one of the constants we set at the beginning we set it to live and also the flag that we have will have to be updated as well as that's true and then the last step um, is going to be to add the game server for the exceptions we'll keep it simple we going to get the message and make a new line I'll copy this over all the, the, the catch sections. Next up is the functions that we need to create in order to communicate with the API. So the first one was the um, get participants function. And we need to open up the API to see what we need to call in order to get the participants. In ESAC, we'll uh, go back to the console dashboard. We're going to open the API. And in the matches section, we have the first endpoint where we get the participants. For this, we need to pass along the token and a match id which uh, we're going to take from the command which has been handled by the event we covered and this is the response we're going to have an array with multiple participants and in each participant object we also have a user object as well this one is important so we can take the the nickname of of the user so now we know the endpoint so we need to get a response from the api which is a get method and we need to pass v1 matches and participants and the parameters we had to send were the token which we have declared in this class and the second one is the match id which again has been overwritten by the command and we're going to return json decode of the body that comes with the response and we're going to access it as an array so we pass this second parameter as true Okay, so now we have the participants. It's a typo here. We're going to iterate through them and then we are going to add the user object I was telling you about. But only the nickname. Because that's the one we are interested in in order to validate the player when he joins participant section is done next one is the update status 
let's go back into documentation. Still in the same section, we have this route. So it's going to be a put request. Uh, we're going to pass matches, the match ID and status with the status ID. And of course, we need to pass again along the token. So let's create the function for updating the status. It's going to take a status ID. And very simple one line code. With the API, we're going to create a put request to matches this match ID and status, the status which was passed along. And that's it. That's going to update the status to live. We're going to update this flag as well. And then the last one in this command is the game server. Add game server. And let's get back into the documentation. One thing I forgot to cover, which I was telling you about, is the constants that we declared in, in our controller class, which are the upcoming live and ended. These are taken from here. And these are general numbers we use for, for events as well, because events also have a status. And yeah, first one is upcoming, second one is live, and third one is ended. For the game server, we have this route. We need to post on this endpoint with, with game servers, and we need to send along the token, the match ID, the name of the server, whether it's pending or not, but in this case, we are the admin, so we're just gonna set it as false. We want it to be visible immediately. We don't want it to be approved or have to be approved by anyone. And then um, the last one is the server link, or in this case, since there is no protocol implemented with Trackmania 2020, we're going to use this field to essentially have a description that users can can read and help them understand how to find the server that they need to join. All right, let's integrate this request as well. This is going to be a request with the post method. Uh, towards matches game servers and we are going to have to pass a JSON the following objects the token the match ID the server name, which in this case is just a test server. Pending false, we want it to be visible immediately in the match page. And the server link here, you can type whatever you want, make it as clear as possible. You can even do stuff, something like go into the live section and then arcade rooms, Search for ESAC. I think that was the name of the server. I'm not sure, but you can experiment this however you want. Ideally is to make it as easy to understand as possible how to join the, the match. So this is done. This is going to add the game server and we finish the first event. The second event is when a player joins. Uh, we need to make sure he's whitelisted. So 
we need to get the player from the callback his nickname which is player nickname and we are gonna go through each whitelisted player as white listed nickname and if we found the nickname we're interested or the player we're interested in we're going to set this as true and break and by default this should be false So if we haven't found a flare player, so if it, the player is not whitelisted, we are going to kick the following arguments. First is the login. The second one doesn't usually appear but we're going to have to enter it nonetheless, which is not authorized. And this needs to be handled. Okay, that was it. Pretty simple. the end match section again it's pretty simple we only need to update the the status of the match but we need to first check if the event was previously started before and we can check that with that flag we set is live and if so we need to update the status to ended And of set the flag back to false. And then the last one is the the waypoint, or in this case, we need to identify through the waypoint event when a player has reached the finish. We need to take the um, time which he finished around and then send it to ESCC. So let's, let's go three steps. So we need to, we need to first check if the waypoint is a finish waypoint. Then we need to get the time. We need to match the player who set the time to the participant we have in on ESAC or the participant object because we're going to need the participant ID and actually first we're going to match and then we're going to get take get the time and after we have the matching and the time done we are going to send the result. So how do we check if a waypoint is a finish one is first and foremost, we need to get the data of the event. So the waypoint is actually a JSON that comes, which we need to decode from the callback data. And in this case, if the waypoint is not an end race, so if it's not an is end race waypoint, then we're just going to ignore the rest of the 
section. Next, we're going to need the login, actually. And based on that login, which we mapped previously in here. Wait, I forgot to do something. Yeah, so remember we had this logins object or array. We declared for us to match the player which drove the, the round and the participant on the ESAC side. And for that, after a player joins and has been whitelisted, we need to append this to, to this array. Going to put the key as his login. And then we add a nickname. And this way we can, based on the login, because we don't have access to the nickname in here. When when the player finishes a round, the only thing that we get in this JSON is an account ID and a login. And you can use both, it doesn't matter. You have to match either login or account ID. I chose to match with login. And this way we can get the nickname by getting uh, yeah, the nickname from this array with the key login. And if we have the nickname, we can find the participant as well. So we're going to go through each participant. And if the participant user that has the TM nickname, the same as the guy who drove this, this round, um, we're going to save the participant ID as participant ID. Otherwise, the participant ID should be null. Okay, and if we still don't find the participant ID, again, we're going to ignore the rest. All right, so this was actually the match part, the matching part, actually. So now I have the participant ID. We also need the time. Which is waypoint race time. And the result is going to be a function we need to create. Where we pass along the participant ID and the time. Let's create a function. And of course, this is going to be another request, which will first check on the documentation. So creating a result on ESAC is done with this Endpoint matches results. It's going to be a post request. We're going to need a token, a match ID, uh, a flag is total result, which is not implemented yet. Um, so we have to set it as the default true. The participant ID, the result, and whether it's pending or not, again, we don't want it to be pending. We want it to be immediately visible. The is total result flag was meant to is actually meant for partial results 
for example, if you have a cup mode match, maybe you might want to save the PBs or the times that have been driven. I mean, that's actually a partial result, but it's not implemented yet, and it's something we we will do in the near future, and that's why it's here. Based on that information, we are going to send a request. Has to be a post. Matches results and a JSON which contains the token. Match ID. The total result flag which I was talking about. Which is going to be true. The participant ID, where we have to make sure is an integer. The result, which has to be a string. And pending, which is going to be false. All right, so we created the result. And that's it. We've gone through every event, every function. And uh, now I'm going to configure all the IPs and ports and all the remaining stuff which needs to be added. And I will run the controller and test it out. Okay, so I configured a few things and I did notice I made some mistakes during the video one of them is this one this needs to be named handle calls i had a typo in here and at the bottom section we need to create a new instance of the controller and then call the loop function locally i had to create uh, some docker files and a docker compose file you don't have to do this uh, i had some issues normally if you want to just uh, execute it locally you just have to type php and control that php but this doesn't work on my end so i created the docker file which gets an um, 7.3 version of a php on alpine and this this was actually the reason it has to do something with the ssl certificates i'm not sure exactly how to do it on windows i know this is an easy fix i just copied this from some other project i had and it works this way and also docker compose file okay let's test it out so normally you have to type php and controller.php in my case since i use docker i will docker compose up build my dedicated server is already up and running and looks to be that the controller is up and running as well now we have to start the match but before we can start the match we need to get the id and you can get the ids from where i showed you in the events and identifiers so we have the match we created which is 1733 all right so if we go here we can execute the command with start 1733. If we do this and go back into our event, which can be accessed from my pages, tutorial page I created, the event matches, and this is the match, you'll see that the status is now live, and we have this message here which we typed from the controller. Live arcade room search for ESCC GG test. And 
uh, we're going to wait until the the round ends because we had also the the end match event which we can test normally i would have thrived right now but i don't have the time to finish the map so we'll test the last step instead of the the second step okay so the match has ended if we go back into the terminal we see that the mania planet end match has been triggered and if we get back into the sac match we can see that the status has been updated to ended now let's try the the whitelisting and the round time so we have the start again start 1733 we will leave this leave the server and enter again so we can test the whitelist and also at the whitelist we did that uh, matching thing this is just for us because we're administrators the players won't have to leave and enter again either way they won't have access to the server before you actually start the match so now we'll drive a, a lap or a round and we'll see if the round is actually the the time of the round is saved on the sac okay and let's check if we refresh we'll see a time here this is not formatted correctly because we didn't add the format we created initially in order to do that we need to add the format to the group and then we add the group format to the match and if we refresh it's going to display nicely and in here as well so this is the project really simple and small one but you can expand from here you can create something like at the end of the match you can create multiple matches and you can assign the participants to those matches you already have the routes and the api console the console api for that and hope it helped hope you find this interesting if you have issues let me know i will either way upload this to github i will uh, add the links to the description to the github repository and to the presentation that was at the beginning of the video as well and hope you enjoy and have a nice day